Good afternoon, everyone, yeah. and welcome to this webinar of understanding and adopting non-linear customer intelligence to accelerate business growth. Webinar is partnered by VSERF, and uh, which will cover various topics, including defining non-linear customer intelligence, overcoming challenges, implementing best practices for gathering and analyzing customer data, importance of real-time insights, personalized experiences, so on and so forth. During the webinar, the speakers will address several questions related to the criticality of understanding and implementing non-linear customer-based intelligence, common challenges, best practices, and historical evaluation uh, from a marketer's perspective. I am very happy to uh, introduce our August panel today. We have with us uh, Deepak Khurana, CEO and co-founder VSOF. We have uh, Deepali Nair. Uh, most of us and all of us know Deepali Nair. She is the marketing guru today amongst us here. Uh, we have got Anshu Grover, uh, uh, Bhogra, VP Planning, Merchandising and E-Commerce, Forever New Clothing. We have got Mahuwa Chaturvedi, as SBU Baggett. We have got Mayank Jha, Head Digital uh, Commerce web, uh, Westside, Trent Limited. Uh, we have got Rikhil Katyal with us, Head Marketing, Chogari Retail, that's Columbia Sportswear, Adventures, uh, Black Diamond, Beal, and Julgo. We have got Rajeshwari Ayer with us, who is Head of Marketing at Enrich. We've got Vaibhav Baveja, Head E-Commerce Bestseller. And last but not the least, uh, we have got a very special person in K. Radhakrishnan, the CEO of Starquake. Uh, it's it's our pleasure to have Radha sir with us uh, uh, today. So uh, uh, I would uh, now, uh, without any delay, request uh, Deepak Purana to give a TED talk, uh, kind of a TEDx talk uh, on what all this is all about, understanding and adopting non-linear customer intelligence to accelerate business growth. Over to you, Deepak. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vitesh. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining in. I think just to decode, um, you know, just to set expectations here, TED Talk really means it's, I'm going to attempt finishing my presentation in 18 minutes. So it may not sound like a TED Talk, but I'm I'm mandated that I have to wrap it up in 18, 19 minutes. <laughs> okay, so let me share my screen. Uh, I presume that uh, everyone can see my screen. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Just give me a second. So, okay. Um, you know, as Hitesh pointed out that over the next 18, 20 minutes, we are just going to talk about uh, adopting non-linear customer intelligence to accelerate business growth. Just one second. Okay. So, uh, first of all, thank you, everyone. Um, uh, really a pleasure uh, having everyone on this call. Uh, now, as we talk about customer intelligence, let's probably just start from where we stand today. You know, today when we talk about customer intelligence, it is primarily dictated by first party data. Now, what it means is that as a retailer, you're relying either on your offline store uh, or your website or your app uh, because customers are coming to your platform and leaving certain breadcrumbs of intelligence when they are transacting on your platforms. So in many ways, whether it is a product interest, transaction frequency, transaction value, you know, all of these are like in one way, some deterministic behavior, which people are leaving on your platform. Uh, you're then able to smartly put that through your own CDP platform uh, and then leverage it for either personalization, for user acquisitions or retargeting. And whilst you do all of that, you're basically trying to achieve certain goals, whether it is uh, reduce, whether it is reduce ROAS, whether it is improve order value, whether it is maximize LTV. Uh, so that's really what we are constantly um, decoding that intelligence and driven with that objective of meeting some of these goals. <clears throat> now, you know, as we do all of that, and like I said that a lot of it is dictated by first party data. Now, very recently, uh, ENY and MMA did a very interesting report on how marketers are leveraging data for marketing. And one of the topics, one of the pages out of this 20 page report spoke about that 56% of Indian marketers acknowledge that there are gaps in data. Okay, uh, now when you're talking about, you know, at a sector level, you're basically saying right from a CPG to a retail and e-commerce sector where each sector also called out the level of gaps. 
like interestingly retail and e-commerce mentioned that look about they probably feel that okay you know there are about gaps which are like to the tune of 25 percent but for the cpg category you know there was an astounding people number of people who acknowledged uh, that the gap was very large by and large the community recognizes the fact that there is some more work which needs to be done in this particular area especially given in mind given given the point that today consumers are also you know more of consumer journey is non-linear you know they are coming into the store um, they're going to your app they're going to other apps they're going to other marketplaces so we are basically saying that look there is a lot which is happening in the customer's life and 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 the journey is non-linear so uh, what are we talking about here um, as we said that there seems to be some gaps so from a marketer perspective you may think that are there more ways to get quality customer insights is there something else out there which we could leverage so here we are talking about now let's pull back you and I as consumers today in the digital world are leaving breadcrumbs of intelligence across various platforms. So I go to a marketplace platform or a D2C platform so that setup really knows that, okay, I'm doing fashion shopping. You know, I go to another platform, they are capturing my annual income. Someone is capturing a signal that I'm an OTT paid subscriber. A travel platform is going ahead and capturing that, okay, I buy air tickets, so on and so forth. So we are all leaving lots of information at lots of different places <clears throat> just to give you a cue out here when a customer goes to a financial marketplace uh, and they are trying to avail a loan a financial marketplace like a credit mantri or a finance buddha any of these platforms uh, what do they do uh, you fill in your kyc information they're able to understand your profile and then over and above that they're able to understand your credit score your annual income if you've taken a loan or not so by and large, we are trying to say here is that a financial marketplace is capturing certain breadcrumbs of intelligence. And the same trend continues across categories. You go to a payment gateway, a payment gateway is plugged in with 300,000 merchants or X number of merchants uh, across categories, you know, whether it is fashion, whether it is mutual funds, whether it is travel. Um, there are many online businesses who require an online payment gateway out there. Practically everyone needs it. So, so what does the payment gateway capture at their end? They're able to identify that a particular customer has done transactions uh, for a particular category. They're able to decode the amount. They're able to classify the, they're able to categorize customers basis frequency, basis the, the value they are spending, uh, so on and so forth, and the category in which they're spending. So here again, you're basically saying that the customer uh, is leaving breadcrumbs of certain intelligence with a payment gateway. I go to an offline store. I think this is very familiar. Similarly, an offline store is also capturing certain information at the point of sale. Uh, a platform like India Mart, where business owners go and list their business, they again capture certain information at their end about the profile of customers. And then when you go to a platform like UpNow, which is a blue collar job platform, you're basically saying that a platform like that is basically classifying customers you know, where they're saying that, look, these are people who are currently from a profession perspective, are they a delivery person? Are they doing business operations? Are they a computer operator? So they're capturing information. So by and large, what we are saying here is that breadcrumbs of intelligence is sitting at lots of different places. Now, what does it mean? Is there a possibility where brands can leverage these breadcrumbs of intelligence? Uh, let's explore that conversation. You know, let's really explore that, that look, uh, can I, as a brand, really find a way or a legitimate way and a secured way to go ahead and leverage this breadcrumb of intelligence for my marketing goals? So, so how does one go about doing it or how does this, real, this value chain really happen? Before we talk about leveraging, I wanted to spend a minute on a couple of slides where you can see that when I, as a customer, this is a privacy policy page of a financial marketplace, a payment gateway, uh, Amazon, you know, a telecom operator. These are privacy policy pages of, of these brands, which, which I ended up showing earlier. What do they do? Uh, when people transact on their platforms, they basically take consent. They basically take consent that look, anonymized user information can be leveraged with marketing technology companies in a manner where they could run brand and promotion campaigns for third-party brands. 
you know so these this is a mechanism in which these entities have gone ahead and taken consumer consent okay uh, for utilizing anonymized data for the purpose of marketing now when we are saying that there is intelligence out there that enterprise has gone ahead and and you know taken the consent there is a marketing technology company which can which can bridge the gap between that intelligence and the marketing world uh, the other interesting part here is that if you take intelligence from any of these sources and when you when you go ahead and you know take that intelligence and put that out on facebook or any publisher platform what the publisher platform then does is they basically create a intersection of users which is users which you have activated on their platform and the opt in users on their platform which have given facebook the permission for uh, audience based advertising so here is a framework out there where intelligence uh, everyone dropped off yeah it looks like <laughs> yeah i think the meeting got shut but i think uh, the same link worked yes Deepak, we can see your screen and yes. the Zoom link. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so my screen is visible, right? Yes. I see Raji back. I see Rikhil back. And when we dropped off, was I on the same slide on page seven? We were on the previous slide where you were just talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh privacy data and that there is a permission to use the the data on an anonymized basis yeah you are on this page that's yes. yeah so let me know when i can restart if everyone is one second sorry sorry i think uh, the meeting time ended and that's why we uh, i talked off no problem ah uh, okay i see rikhil back raji back radha is back so there I guess all of us are in if I'm not wrong. Except the organizers, everyone else is back. <laughs> okay, no worry. No worry. We can start, I think, because I don't think uh, Vaibhav and. Uh, uh, but would the same thing have happened to the participants of the web web webcast? Or I don't know. No, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so should we continue? Yeah. I. Or should yeah, we... I think I think yes. I think please continue. You know what, Deepak? You continue. I'll call Hitesh on the side yeah, yeah. phone. Uh, yeah, please continue. Okay, got it. Thank you. So, I think the when we dropped off, I was just trying to take uh, land a point that consumers provide consent to these platforms. There is a way in which uh, this alternate intelligence uh, can come together, which I'll probably talk uh, as we go further, and then ship. into platforms like a facebook or a google or a hotstar uh, or a programmatic platform or if you want to leverage some of this intelligence for whatsapp marketing so on and so forth so there is a method in which one can do it but by and large wanted to just share this slide that that opt in users taken from a financial marketplace which you see on the right hand side or a telecom operator or a payment gateway can intersect with opt in users on meta and that's really how the framework really collaborates to enable this intelligence for the purpose of marketing now uh, you know um, moving forward we spoke about this intelligence part um, uh, can this intelligence be harnessed at one place in a very simple and a convenient manner yeah so that's uh, that's when you know we would like to introduce our platform we serve audience pro so what audience pro does is uh, we basically have uh api integration with multiple enterprises like the uh, the examples which i gave you whether it is a payment gateway whether it's a financial loan marketplace a telecom operator uh we also did a partnership with future retail this is before the uh before the reliance episode happened yeah so we also did a partnership with them and and similarly there are many more platforms which are there so what we've done is through our smart apis we are able to bring in hashed attributes from lots of different places okay lots of different kind of interesting signals uh, in real time we are able to cross tab it okay across 
multiple partners, the multiple signals, create smarter cohorts, and then leverage those cohorts for the purpose of marketing. So here I would like to just very quickly jump in and say that in, in a category like retail, uh, fashion, or in a category like personal care, we've been working with quite a few brands out here. Uh, so fundamentally leveraging this alternate intelligence or this non-linear intelligence, okay, uh, and then utilizing it for the campaign goals, say, of a Nika or a Sugar or a Bajaj or a Peter England, you know, where we've been able to say that, look, for a brand, we've been able to improve the VTR rates. For another brand, we're reducing their cost per reach, or we are improving CTRs uh, for a brand on Facebook, uh, or we are going ahead and generating a lift in CTRs uh, for another brand out there. Uh, so that's the kind of impact we've been able to do uh, utilizing these segments, adding on uh, outside the category of retail, fashion, personal care. Uh, Audience Pro also works with brands across multiple categories, and we also solve multiple KPIs using this alternate intelligence. So for an FMCG brand like Dettol, we are helping them go ahead and gen help them with incremental reach over TV through the digital platform. So when we run a campaign for them on YouTube, we are able to give them an output that look, the users which we reach out are incremental over television. For a QSR brand like Domino's, we are able to improve their order value. For a B2B brand like AMD, we are able to improve the average session time. And there are more such KPIs which we are constantly solving for a brand. So as, we, uh, as I spoke about what we've been doing for the brands, uh, now you may just you know, probably look at Audience Pro and ask a question that why does it sit really in a marketing stack? Or where do I really place this Audience Pro cloud uh, from an architecture perspective? So this is a slide which can just give you a zoom out view of where this sits in the marketing stack. Uh, so your first party data, which is your linear customer intelligence is on the left hand side. So you, you basically have your linear customer intelligence. And using Audience Pro, one can have access to non-linear customer intelligence. So Audience Pro has APIs with multiple enterprises. We kind of bring these segments here. We create a single place for insights. We cross-tab it. And then we are able to push these audiences into a business manager account of a Facebook, or we are able to push it into an Amazon marketplace, or we are able to push it on YouTube or someone which is doing retention marketing, they can use this intelligence and make their WhatsApp marketing smarter. Yeah, so that's really how this really stacks up um, as an architecture. Uh, some more shades on the tool. You know, this is how your insights look. Um, you may question that, okay, you know, how do I do select so many signals and so many segments? So the platform has access to 550 million profiles and we have 700 plus attributes. I use the word access uh, simply because we don't store any of these profiles on the platform. You know, so think of us that you come to the tool, you choose the segment and at the time of campaign activation is when we go ahead and pull these segments from our partners. We push them to these MarTech platforms or ad tech platforms and then we delete that segment or, or the, the whole segment gets purged. Hence, we also call it a zero storage CDP. So 550 million profiles are not stored on APRO, but you have access. It's like OYO Rooms does not own uh, hotels, but they have access to the inventory of hotels, which people can come on the demand side on the OYO platform and buy. Uh, think of us like the OYO for customer intelligence. And then, of course, it's easy to activate because it allows you to configure accounts and easily activate. Uh, last but not the least, you know, when you look at all of this, you're basically saying that, look, what does this intelligence or nonlinear intelligence do for me? It helps you plan better, activate, measure, and it comes with a ton of features uh, right from insights to activation uh, and a range of signals. You know, so with that, you know, I'd like to just probably pause here. That was my second last slide. Uh, uh, so I, I, I've completed my presentation and I hope that the point on nonlinear intelligence uh, is come out and I'm happy to take questions, uh, you know, on decoding this uh, to the next level. Uh, so can I ask uh, uh, Dipali, 
to you know uh, this dipali from your perspective can you throw some light on deepak's presentation you know and yeah. decode what actually non linear uh, you know uh, intelligence is all about yeah i also i will just take about uh, three or four minutes but i want to share an anecdote before that you know uh so deepak uh, met me a couple of weeks back and everybody knows that i've just shifted jobs from ibm to you know sikibilla group and i was a little freer and i was spending time in bombay um and you know when he came and showed me the kind of work he's doing i actually blurted out and i said you are a marketer's best kept secret uh you know more people need to know what you're doing because uh you know to me what he's managed to do has solved some age old problems for uh, us marketers um i started my career like all of you where we used to do market research you know to understand customer to do segmentation and all of you would have done that right and then we moved to a space where at least in the service industry we had a lot of transactional data and we stopped doing those traditional you know unas and what's the demographic profile of our customer and things like those and a lot of us actually stopped doing that but we still we still weren't sure of what we were dealing with because the transactional data was just our own you know and we didn't have insights from around in uh, other categories so the first problem that you know uh, uh, uh the whole uh, uh product here the what deepak has spoken about is solving that non linear intelligence non linear data and non non linear intelligence thing is that i have my customer i can actually look at my customer uh, from the first party data of lots of other brands and products and say okay you know this is what he or she does in other areas so that's the first bit that whole you know age old market research intelligence is on my tips second is i can segment it and see it so i don't necessarily need to you know look at it from a holistic perspective and say okay i have you know 200000 customers and i only need to i can only find out about them you know at 200000 levels i can actually segment it and say somebody who came and bought once from me somebody who came into my store somebody who came to me online segment it and say okay here's this 25000 customer cohort and here's this 50000 customer so so i have very good understanding of segmentation and the third most beautiful thing is that i'm being allowed to target through this without disturbing any of my current system i don't change the agency i don't change my martech platform i don't change my cdp i don't change whether my team is in house or out house uh, you know outside at an agency i don't change anything i just use the layer um, you know that we serve and audience pro provides and i target better and the results that i have seen and i've spoken to people you know who've used uh, you know used his product uh, are are very many so they are not just in one area you can actually look at your average order size going up if you target well you can you know you can of course do the traditional things which is you know get more app installs uh, you know you can of course look at getting more impressions you can get people to spend more time on your website you can do the age old things but i think interesting opportunity especially since we're talking to people who over here were sitting in retail is also the uh you know uh, cross sell uh, relationship building and uh, getting more wallet share uh, you know from the existing customers that you have uh and all, in all this i think very constantly the marketers being we marketers are being asked to prove roi of the money that we are spending uh so we all run performance marketing budgets we can get more efficient there with the layer that you have an audience pro and secondly i think even on the brand side uh you know we can get sharper uh and uh, you know provide more uh, uh, you know uh, data points to show that you know our, our dollars are working better also going forward you know we are saying that it will be a cookie less world uh and you know we will have lesser dependence uh, therefore on all the marketing uh, you know uh, ecosystem that's available to us which works on interest area basis so you know whether you look at youtube you look at facebook they all work on interest areas you know i'm interested those are declared interests that audience may have here you have an opportunity of actually doing segmentation and saying i'm going to now target basis actual transaction that a customer has done you know somebody's actually used a credit card somebody's actually gone and bought, bought a uh, you know soap dish uh, you know somebody who's actually gone and bought a um, uh, you know a detergent or whatever you know and the last piece that i want to tell you is that i think what was very interesting for me and this came home to me when i used to be at mahindra holidays 
uh, we were doing some work and we found uh, that there was a correlation between people who bought health insurance and uh, you know people who bought mahindra holidays they they made better candidates and we got better conversion if people had bought you know health insurance so such uh, you know correlations will all, can can also be made possible apart from uh, you know just uh, getting to know more about our customers so uh, so therefore therefore i think i was very very excited i'm already been uh, you know talking to deepak about you know a whole lot of opportunities that are possible which are beyond marketing and i think business people business teams will be very interested in what marketers can do for them i just feel that with this you know you get a seat back on the table about adding value to the business so hitesh i'm going to stop there thanks thanks deepali i think uh, uh, you did uh, know through a lot of uh, insightful perspective there uh, let me go to uh, radha sir to start with uh, you know and since we have got this uh, uh, after what dipali explained the importance uh, but radha sir we would like to understand from you why is it critical for retailers also to understand and implement uh, non linear uh, customer intelligence you know something that uh, what we were discussing uh, just uh, a few few minutes before when we started yeah so i think uh, one of the points i want to bring up here is what is the non linearity in this conversation we've had so far what we are talking about is mainly data what i have seen in the presentation is also about data how you use the data across various platforms and the presence of customers across uh various channels in which they purchase but i don't know what the non linearity really if that's the topic then we should talk about that because we have we have had sufficient amount of conversations in the past several years about how cdp is made how you use that how you try and track customers across the across the web but really the question really deepak i want to hear from you sure. and pali from you as well so what's the non linearity here the way i see it is that uh, you know i'm very biased towards grocery because i've not done any other business in my life so uh, but uh, grocery is one of the one of the most linear categories because the predictability of a customer's behavior is very very high and that's what so i see the world in two buckets one bucket is grocery and for me the rest of the world is in the other bucket uh grocery is where people buy interact with uh with grocery as a category more than 150 times a year now right. which other category can you ever imagine somebody inter- interacting 150 times a year right and therefore grocery is in my view i have always found selling grocery easier than selling fashion or selling furniture because the buying life cycle of the customer for all other categories is so long some are 3 years some are 1 year some are 3 months but nothing is week to week we track our customers on a week to week basis and right. therefore the non linearity really comes from from instigated by by actually the category in which they shop rather than the huge amount of data and all the conversation around use of data is not explaining non linearity that's the point i want to put on the table if you actually read and i've i've tried to read the theoretical foundations of the consumer behavior for many many years and it is huge and voluminous with the relationship between attitude and behavior is mm. uh, very poorly understood and very poorly discussed and uh, while well i've run stores all my life um, you know the biggest challenge that we face is how do you predict the behavior of a customer who comes into the store there's a very nice book i will recommend that you read it's a very old book but it is one of the of the which has maximum amount of depth i have seen it's by paco underhill it's called why we buy it's one of the most fantastic books because there was no uh, in internet at that time that he was writing the book and i have seen him face to face in the us uh, for several conferences and uh, it's extremely insightful he has got videos of how customers shop they go to one section go away from the section come back to the section lift something don't buy it but in the last 5 minutes of their shopping pick up some 20 items so the behavior of the customer and the attitude of the customer there is no relationship i'll just finish by saying when you talk of non linearity if you look at the research that exists around the world they are trying to make the correlation between attitude and behavior 
For instance, if I am very environmentally friendly, then I should be consuming more organic product. That's not actually the fact. The fact is that organic products are the least sold, but the awareness of environment is very high. So the, the link between uh, attitude and behavior is very weak. It is really belief, attitude and behavior that makes our lives completely nonlinear. So I'm just going to leave it here, uh, Hitesh, because uh, there are so many other people to speak, but really, I don't know whether I put the put the wolf amongst the pigeons, but I, I didn't hear about anything nonlinear about what we have said so far. Sure, sure. Okay, so should I respond? Yes, to yes, yeah. yes, Deepak, you can, you know, succinctly respond and then we'll take it other, but yes, Radha sir has raised some, uh, you know, uh, important points, but yes, Deepak, you can please go ahead. Yeah. So firstly, I think Radha sir, you know, uh, very useful to have your perspective and, and obviously, you know, with the kind of huge marketing background you have and the amount of years of experience you have, your understanding of consumers and, and all these pieces is, uh, uh, you know, by far like superior than any one of us in this on this panel. Yeah. Uh, now I'll tell you, uh, maybe uh, I'll tell you where we decoded the word nonlinear from. Okay. And I'll just probably take it as a use case out here that... Uh, uh, when Big Bazaar came to us for a campaign and they told us that, listen, we need some alternate intelligence, okay? Uh, because we want people, you know, we have a store, we have, we, we have people who go to my offline store and then we also now have an online store, okay? So I've got customers who are coming to my offline stores. Now I am sending them promotions day after day to come to my online store, okay? Uh, and I'm doing a lot of marketing on them, but I'm not seeing enough convergence there. Yeah. So what we did for them as a problem statement was we said that, look, why don't you put in a hashed manner, in a secured manner, your offline buyer data on our platform. Okay. When they did that, we were able to identify that about 20% of the people, okay, of people who were transacting in the offline store, okay, are heavily buying grocery online. They're buying food online. The digital transaction activity uh, uh, is very high. Okay, uh, their whole spend index on digital is again very high. So we identified out of that base about a twenty percent set of people where we found that they deterministically go ahead and indulge on digital platforms, whether it is grocery or across categories. So that we took as an attribute, and then we went and said, "Oh, you want to." you know, really run a campaign uh, on a Facebook or on a Google. Uh, don't go after all your customers. Just go after this 20% of the base. So this is the, this is the alternate or non-linear intelligence which is available outside your platform. Okay. Uh, and that's really how we were able to give them efficiencies uh, for their online store. Very interesting. Yeah. Where, so, and uh, you, would, you would use their presence on the net to find out where they're shopping? <clears throat> yes. So what we do, what we uh, did, sir, was more than the presence on the net. When I was explaining the slide, um, 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 so Big Bazaar had hashed mobile numbers of people who went to their offline store. They knew that basis the basket value they were able to classify high value, low value customers. So they went and and more frequent, less frequent customers. So they put out about ten different segments on our tool. Now we scrubbed it against our platform. This is not on the net. What we did was because the same hashed mobile number is transacting on the payment gateway or they are in the telecom world or they are, you know, in, in another platform on the financial loan marketplace. So deterministically, you're basically saying that I'm, think of it this way, that there are deterministic panel data sitting at 10 different places. You're able to scrub it against 10 different panel data create a new cohort. So that's really how you're borrowing that intelligence and segmenting and then activating it. So, so which is where when Dipali mentioned, this is deterministic intelligence, not, not scraping the net. Got it. Understood. Yeah. So, you, you know, you. you're basically saying, can I borrow intelligence from someone else's first party segment? You know? Yeah. So, so this is, sorry, this, sorry, sorry, Dipali, just, just, just before you come in, you know, Knowing something is different from doing something, right? I know it, but I don't know what to do with it. Sure. And doing something is different from producing a result. 
Correct. Otherwise, we are on a treadmill. So, Correct. Correct. So really, the problem I've had is, I mean, we also in in Tata, we also have store data, but uh, and I can I can track which customer is shopping online. That that we can do. But really, for me, how do you go further? How do you make it meaningful for the customer? How right. do you add value to the customer? That's really what I'm trying to find out. Correct. 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 Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we will uh, will pause here and uh, we'll again come back. Radha sir has you know raised some uh, very good questions out here, and it's a overall part of what we are discussing today. I would uh, like to take uh, our other panelists, Mayank uh, and Rikhil, uh, on the call to start with Mayank. Uh, all of you, please give me your first uh, inputs on you know uh, what's your take on you know uh, implementing and understanding non-linear uh, customer intelligence. That's the basic uh, uh, take that you can share. But my question here is uh, to you would be now that apart from traditional market research, what are some of the best practices uh, of gathering and analyzing customer data so that you know uh, we can get insights into their behaviors and their preferences, et cetera. So the first part is your take on the uh, subject matter that we are discussing. And second part is on apart from the traditional method, what are the other methods? For data generation, Bayang, we can start with you. Sure, Ritesh. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, yes, yes. So I think I think I really like Deepak's uh, presentation, mm -hmm. and some of the questions uh, Radha sir also raised are quite relevant and and stimulating. Uh, one of the things, so uh, I I come from fashion background and and from FMCG prior to that. So uh, that's my lens of looking at uh, nonlinearity, and. Uh, it's already been covered that we have moved from a world of CDP to a situation where we are looking at the entire pool of customer data and how to churn out insights. And one of the challenges we have always found as marketers also whenever or as business people when we interact with marketers is that the insight needs to be actionable. And how do you convert that actionable insight into business then? Okay. What the take that we have seen is consumer perhaps now more than ever because of so much information available and for no other reason because the internet has just given information about everything to everybody on the click of a uh, on their palm basically uh, authenticity becomes a very strong driver so in in a traditional funnel you're really being driven by very big emotional uh, advertisements on, on the top, communications designed to influence certain behaviors at the top of the funnel. And then you have a traditional sort of flow from top to middle to bottom and you convert it into, into a purchase. But today, when authenticity is the name of the game, uh, customer may find, read about you on, a, on any blog or he may, he may actually uh, get influenced by a third party influencer or he may uh, really read about you on some forum. There are many of these forums going around and he may not be really landing from top of the funnel at all. He went directly through all the uh, ads, retargetings or uh, first time targetings that we do directly ran in the middle of the funnel. Or sometimes even some of the brands which are very heavy on bottom of the funnel uh, activities directly come over there. But his association with the brand, with the product is largely driven by interactions which are more UGC or more brand driven in a larger uh, ecosystem. So the interactions that brands are having with consumers, especially in categories where at least fashion, I can say, where the look and feel is much more important than, than, than what you write. And then how do you define look and feel? Because trends keep changing every, every season. Uh, collections keep changing every season then collections have a different behavior and product uh, pages have a different behavior. The core products have a different behavior. So, and consumers respond uh, differently to each one of them. Uh, the same consumer responds differently to, uh, to them across different brands. So because of the authenticity uh, today, which all brands require to show, and, and you really can't hide with so much information available there, uh, non-linearity becomes important. So that's the lens we look at because you cannot really straight jacket uh, the, the behavior of consumer in one line. Some of the things which, which I found interesting was some of the snippets, which I think uh, I think uh, we have lost uh, Mayank. Can anybody hear Mayank? 
No, no, okay. Well, Fair enough. Paused. I think he's paused. Okay, no. I think he dropped off. It, okay. Uh, Rikhil, we can, you know, uh, have your views uh, on this, you know, if you can, uh, please share. Yes. Hi. Hi, everyone. So, um, um, uh, we are actually, at Chibori, we are actually um, in the business of um, apparel, equipment, uh, accessories, but for a very niche um, uh, industry, which is uh, hiking and trekking and mountaineering, basically the outdoors. The outdoors in US and in, in, in the West is very, very popular, as, but in India, it's, it's still at a very nascent stage. So what we are trying to do is reach out to the consumer, make them aware of um, of the culture uh, that we have. A plus uh, also tell them that when you are in the team environment in temperature, you uh, that includes their their merchandise as well. So um, by non-linear, I'll I'll direct, jump directly into the topic what Deepak said, and rightly I would love to understand. Um, uh, for example, I have a store in Ambient Small and who is shopping in Ambient Small equivalent to my brand or the, the, the person who is, uh, who is, uh, who has the pocket to buy Columbia, for example, and B, uh, if the person is buying a package from say India hikes and going to, uh, Everest base camp, whether that person is traveling to Everest base camp, wearing a fashion jacket or actually investing into the right gear or equipment. Now that becomes very important from my business point of view. And I would love to interact with that consumer and that I can't do through my funnel or the current funnel because that person is not in my uh, ecosystem. Now that ecosystem, I need to reach out to through someone else's ecosystem and, and try to reach out to the customer, uh, talk to that consumer and get them to, to interact with my brand and then buy it. So, so from that perspective, I think non-linear approach or the, the uh, I would say, um, uh, very non-traditional approach, I would say is very, very important because my funnel talks to a set of people and whereas I would love to interact with people who are actually engaging themselves into outdoors, engaging themselves into uh, the stuff who are actually my buyers. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Rikhil. Before I request Deepali to ask a question, uh, Mayank, uh, we could not hear you. And we'll then quickly take Rajeshwari's view also, and then we'll move to the Pali. So Mayank, you, you, can, you can conclude sorry. your I, points. Yeah, so sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. So I, I think uh, pretty, pretty uh, concluded. So what I was going to summarize it with is that authenticity really is today driven by consumer uh, data, UGC, uh, and less by uh, what a multi-million dollar uh, uh, brand ambassador is going to say. Uh, on on TV and uh, by using uh, non linearity of the data that we have, uh, we can really promote advocacy and community a lot more, and that's much more uh, relevant uh, in terms of impact on the business numbers also in terms of loyalty and repeats etc cetera, etc cetera, which comes uh, as a follow through bit. Uh, and I was just going to park with two points which I thought uh, uh, one was. Uh, Actually, both are related. The Pali mentioned how modular is Deepak's uh, uh, solution, which she came across. And I, I feel that's one of the problems uh, which is still to be cracked as to, uh, you know, when, when we talk about nonlinear data, which is the best solution which brings all of it together. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone, uh, really, there are a lot of players out of there. Uh, and I'm sure uh, a lot of very experienced people are there on this panel. So they would have come across many solutions. Uh, uh, but still, I think every brand I go to, I learn something new and we do see some gaps. So that's, that, that's really some, uh, what is a one-stop solution? Uh, I don't think I've come across any yet. Okay. I'll, so just, we, sorry, I'll just add to what Mayan said. So yeah, similar to what he's mentioning, even, even I come across, um, uh, brands and, and companies who are, have a lot of solutions and, and they're doing a fantastic job. Everyone is trying to solve a problem in the, uh, in the industry. So what we face is because, because there are so many touch points now, uh, as compared to 20 years ago, there are so many touch points. It's very difficult to capture all the touch points together. And that's where I think, uh, if, if, if we focus on those touch points, we as a brand try to do that as many touch points we try to cover, but then solutions are there in the market. We need to know which, which are the right solutions, which can maximize that approach and probably that will help us reach out to the consumer who's sitting right at the corner, but he's the, he's or she, or he or she is the actual consumer who can buy the product. So, yeah. Done, done. Uh, Rikhil, thanks for that. Rajeshwari, are you there? Uh, can we have your views uh, on the same? 
Nitesh, I will just take two minutes uh, sure, because sure. So, it's something interesting that Mayank brought up. Yeah. Uh, and I think Rikhil also resonated that. And there's a little framework that I kind of tend to use. And I say this all the time to people that, you know, if it means investing capex and buying your technology where you've got, you know, CIO, CTO involved, I think then you must look at the life of that technology for not more than three years, you know, is a little principle that I use. I think the solution that we're talking about here is a zero capex solution. It's about experimentation. Uh, I think more on the marketing framework side. And when it comes to this experimentation, I at least used to encourage my team to say there should be no, uh, you know, POC that you kind of uh, proof concept if you're not doing. Um, and uh, I still remember, uh, you know, wherever I have gone, I've actually said to my CEO that 5% of my budget will be used for experimentation. Assume it will fail. Assume all of it will fail. And we used to have experiments running every quarter. I always had that. Every quarter, a new experiment is being run with strict measurement to see, you know, how is it performing? And if, you know, one out of 20 experiments also work for us, then you scaled it up in the next quarter. So at least, you know, these are the two principles I've used. If it's CAPEX, then, you know, consider the life as three years. This, for example, is not a CAPEX and all thing. It's a new experimentation somebody's brought. Do the POC, put 5% of your budget on it and see, you know, where it takes you. I think uh, that principle has stood me in good ground. Okay, so I, I'll say if one is a CAPEX, other is the OPEX. Uh, Three years for capex and five percent for the yearly stuff to experiment. You know that's the way I look at it. Dipali, a very valid point. Rajeshwari, your views on this, please. Before we go to Dipali, you know if she would like to ask uh, a question also. Rajeshwari, please. I think I um I I completely agree with Dipali. So at Enrich, at least uh, uh this is my first retail experience, right? I've come from FMCG through and through my career where I followed funnel. And uh, when I reached retail and, and the service kind of industry is where I really realized what non-linearity actually means. Uh, you know, in traditional uh, FMCG, you still follow large scale awareness and then lead it sales at accessibility point, right? But here it isn't because decision making is absolutely convoluted and it is not one footfall in the store that actually converts the consumer. It's multiple business, multiple point of views. Uh, so we have really been not just the good part is, yes, we have very good CRM data and we are able to retarget some of the customers very sharply identify cohorts. Uh, but what brings them back and uh, what is the trigger that, uh, you know, whether it has been a bad experience then how do you really resolve it, whether it is something else, uh, these are answers that keep changing. And they are absolutely different for every individual kind of customer, to be honest, in a service industry, uh, you know, because you're personally interacting with them. So we interact with those trigger or we experiment with those trigger points a lot. Uh, and, you know, we do see seasonality and sometimes it's cashback, sometimes it's discount, sometimes it's giving them a service that they really want at the point of reference. So we do experiment and understand that. Uh, and it's it's something that we uh, absolutely uh, diligently do on a day to day and a personalized cohort basis for us. Th thanks, uh, Rajeshwari. I would uh, like Deepali also to ask uh, a question or two to Deepak and others. Uh, you know something what Radha sir started. I think this is you know uh, dwelling into a good uh, uh, discussion point here, Deepali. So uh, any specific question that you would like to address? I think um, I just want to share uh, Radha's frustration. So Radha, you know, when you say that, you know, you have a lot of data and, uh, you know, sometimes you don't know what to do with the data that you have. I totally share that frustration because, you know, kabi uh, kabi data analysis paralysis hota hai. And we also seem to have the same data. It takes us to the same conclusions. And I, I and, and, and I have always felt that, you know, do I have two friends across in the industry who I can call and bounce my, you know, frustration with? And I think what has held me again in good stead is that, you know, there is a person I call for data, which happens to be Deepak, by the way. OK, and there is a person I call for mobile solutions and there is a person I call if I have a UX, IX issue, you know, and uh, 
uh, I get uh, I get them as a sounding board and I get, you know, good advice on, you know, uh, what to do. I think here the only opportunity we have is probably running a POC to say, OK, first time I have the opportunity of looking at my first party data and running it with, you know, somebody else's first party data and see if some magic can happen. It may or may not happen, depending on, you know, I think how rich our data is and what our KPIs are. Uh, but I think there's a there's an opportunity for us to uh, uh, you know uh, do that POC uh, you know is what uh, I would say. No, Hitesh, I don't really have a question for Deepak. Uh, but Deepak, uh, you may want to share I think some more interesting examples from financial services brands. Uh, you know, simply because I think financial services brands also undergo a lot of scrutiny. Uh, and I have worked in financial services. They undergo a lot more scrutiny in terms of, uh, you know, data privacy and protection of customer interest uh, than actually, you know, perhaps any other industry. Sure. So, um, okay. So one is, um, you know, from, um, I, I just want to, before I go there, you know, I was itching to make one com comment, you know. Um, um, so I think what we are basically saying is that non-linearity is a mindset okay first of all you know today we are getting used to looking at things from multiple dimensions that's about it you know to to just really simplify that yeah the second part is that yes from a consumer perspective you know today we recognize the fact that you know um, a customer of bestseller does xyz things on bestseller at the same time, he is a customer of Enrich. He is a customer of Nika. He is a customer of 10 other enterprises, right? Because today we are all sharing that customer in some form or the other, you know. Uh, so he is there doing tons and tons of activities. Yeah. Now, interestingly, because of the way digital adoption is on the rise, okay, you're basically saying that, look, you know what? Now there is a way and mechanism in which I can have a secured API, okay, across multiple such data lakes or intelligence sources, yeah, and I can go ahead and really classify, reclassify my customers, uh, and then make this intelligence accessible, you know. So think of it this way: uh, that look, you know, back in the day, what is a cloud? They replace servers, you know. Okay, so they replace servers. They what did cloud come and do to you? They, they saved you money by saying you don't have to put capex you don't have to put manpower to manage your server farms okay uh, what is the traditional way of data collection yes you go and buy a capex you put a cdp for your own and first party data okay so yes you do that but you can do only so much with that and we are like the cloud of data where you're saying look here what what am i getting you know at a fraction or at at a zero entry cost zero entry cost i'm using the word okay you're basically going and saying that, listen, can I borrow, you know, can I borrow, use, see the effectiveness, learn from it and iterate from it, you know, so I, I tend to, you know, give you guys this kind of a perspective, because it's like that, you know, today, we don't buy a car, we take an Ola, we take an Uber, you know, uh, you know, think of audience pro as another Ola or a Uber for customer intelligence, yeah, uh, which you have access to, yeah, so that's one. Now, coming back to Dipali's question on, on you know, uh, financial. So we work a lot with all categories and the BFSI sector also works. Leading banks work with us. Leading mutual fund works with us. Uh, to, her point was that many of these large brands and large BFSI customers, uh, their, uh, their demands on compliance, security, process, because data is also a sensitive topic. Okay, it's a very sensitive topic because you want to first have a checkbox on the whole process and the framework of privacy by design, data security, no data storage. These are elements which are essential, you know, from a regulator perspective, from a business operating perspective. Yeah. So here we are talking about leading financial institutions would hash their segments, deploy their hashed segments on our tool, generate insights and then go ahead and activate basis that insights, whether they want to sell a credit card, whether they want to go ahead and sell a personal loan uh, or whether they want to sell an insurance. Yeah. So there we just want to probably, I, I think Dipali, to your point, it was about saying that, listen, you know, when financial institutions as a category look at this, all we are trying to say here is that from a data security and a compliance perspective, 
you know the standard is platinum and there are other sectors also who maintain a fairly high bar yeah, yeah. so yeah. just want to give the comment on Hitesh, the sorry yeah yeah radha sir you go ahead rajeshwari also has raised a hand mm -hmm. after radha sir rajeshwari you can please speak. Uh, I, sir, just, please. I just i just want to i just want to redefine we won't have time to discuss a lot but in terms of the non linearity right we are talking about non linearity of data collection or data use but there is not there are there's not a single e-commerce company which doesn't already have enough customers problem is customer retention right i think you got to address the non linearity to customer behavior i think the easy part is to get new customers if you give me you know you know half a million dollars i can get you know five and a half million customers to come and shop with me next day morning they are they never come back i get uninstalls i'm talking about the non linearity of behavior the biggest problem in our business today is not new customers correct the biggest problem rajeshwari has is that why didn't that guy come back and cut his hair again next month for or after two months for god's sake yes. and i am asking the Absolutely. question that i have the best fruit and vegetable i have the lowest prices i am delivering the damn thing home but they are not shopping with me after 30 days what is that linearity i there is enough data i have got mountains of data i have got mountains and mountains of data my problem is non linearity of behavior yes yeah and uh, raji you want to speak i just yeah. want to react to this uh, yeah i, I think said. i kind of echo his sentiment because one of the issues is correlation and causation right there is so much data that you are just correlating anything and everything and we we actually ran an experiment on look alike consumers that platform gives us and where we didn't choose look alike in another market and to be very honest the conversion factors were not very significantly different right so yeah. you ended up saying okay are we correlating it or is it really a cause or you know is it something that you're just experimenting and putting it away so yeah. that continues right. to mean and retention becomes a big big challenge right yeah. even so i i think both of you to to what sorry for interrupting you but you know i'm just i'm smiling because you know what we're talking about is the martech data not talking to the adtech platforms okay and that's because the data that you have internally there's no way for correlating you to the let's say the local like data that the platforms are offering and you know what you're doing and remember that they are going on probabilistic behavior and not deterministic behavior so i think there's a gap there uh, you know raji and uh, everybody shares your frustration everyone does right and therefore there is there is merit in relooking at this whole thing and radha i think uh, why i share your frustration is because and i i don't know how the listeners will react to this but you know there is a certain uh, sleepiness there is a certain laziness you know set in the way of this young boy who's finished two years or three years you know in a startup e-commerce organization and he's gotten used to you know just i'm just giving one random example saying okay we will do monthly cohorts you know the monthly become 45 day cohorts and they become 90 day cohorts that's the only way we will do segmentation right <laughs> now nobody is challenging them and nobody has the time and energy to say is there a different way of segmenting and using the cohort at all and that requires huge investment of time uh, you know at your on your part and my part which we may not have by the way you know and some intelligent people who understand the data language because my frustration also stems from the fact that there is that one half or more than one half of my team who doesn't understand data at all you know and the people who understand the data do not understand that consumer can be looked at in a very different fashion so i think that i also say this jokingly that's why people like you and me have our jobs and retain them okay because we've got to make them work together <laughs> yes Uh, but uh, but but radha happy happy to happy to talk for the offline and share no, no, our conversations no, i i will just you know, i will be just be a sounding board you know no, i will i will just i will just finish by saying this uh, i don't know how much time we have but you know we'll all do very well if we just use our existing data and apply it to our own business my marketing guy you know every monday morning we have a huddle i say that tell me how the i think we lost radha can you guys hear me or have you yeah 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 we can hear you yes yes okay we can hear so so um um i mean i think we have to do some 
some meditative data data business right we got to look within and we have to look connect our own data with our own business what is it what is your business objective and how i how is that customer relating to that business objective right so uh, really for me the biggest puzzle to solve is customer behavior retention of that customer the behavior of the customer has got to be understood what's the relationship between belief attitude and behavior right attitude and behavior we have there is enough empirical research to say that attitude and behavior is very poorly related i mean we talk about environment but, but we use we continue to use plastic but when your belief is strong that i shouldn't eat beef that's my belief then i don't eat beef or i i so what is important is to understand that this political environment which is actually selling belief when you do that that is the strongest stickiness as far retention is concerned how can you unearth that with the data that you already have what is the belief of that customer not the attitude of the way of the customer customers always act and human beings always act their behavior is more correlated to their belief rather than their attitude there is huge data available research data which there is not a single university which doesn't do this kind of data enough is there but we don't have enough time uh, well said radha sir uh, you mentioned about uh, belief attitude and behavior you know we know the attitude we know the behavior but the belief who will know and how strong that belief is to you know uh, uh, attract or demand or you know motivate that change or that action in the consumer is something that needs to be you know researched uh, for we have got a couple of questions we are running uh, uh, out of time also so i would like to take one of the questions out of the five and one of them is how do we take this uh, across martech platform so how do we take non linearity across the martech platforms uh, you know anybody can uh, take a try and please answer this question I'll go Would like to. Please, I just want to also say this. Uh, if you guys can yes, hear me, that yes. is. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm saying. Yeah, we can hear you. I, uh, I mean, the questions. Yeah, the question is very valid. So how do we take it? Forms. I think what Deepak presented is uh, actually agnostic. Uh, you know, to any platform. Uh, and I just want to leave everybody with the thought that you no, know, some of us. come from data less environments and uh, you know some of us come from data rich environments but i think experimentation is required in both the places if you are uh, come coming from data less environments uh, then i think uh, you have the opportunity of using lots of data of lots of other organizations first party data to actually do a quick ramp up of your marketing efforts uh, and if we come from data rich environments such as grocery retail you know then again uh, can we uh, stir the pot uh, and uh, say that look you know we will try and get intelligence from uh, you know other places and but i think experimentation and doing uh, pocs is the is the key uh, to getting results for any marketer uh, you know we must uh, uh, experiment um, uh, and we must look at uh, uh, you know uh, understanding and realizing where we can we can do a poc and where we can't uh, because a lot of the times capex is involved here we have an example and a case study of a place what deepak has presented where there is no uh, we don't need to change much in what we are doing uh, i think and still learning okay uh, thanks thanks dipali anybody would like to answer that because dipali has you know answered it perfectly i, I would just like add yeah. it takes up to the point that just point just a an answer to the martek part that the apro platform can be configured with any of your martech platforms so if you are utilizing say hypothetically a netcore or you are utilizing a mo engage or you are utilizing a wixo or or you are utilizing a calera any systems you know so if you as a marketer already have established martech platforms there is a api integration which we do okay now we'll go for the final round uh, succinctly i would request all of you to summarize you know what you feel you know is understanding and adopting non linear uh, customer intelligence radha sir you have said it but uh, uh, you did mention about the attitude uh, belief and uh, behavior so uh, we can have a final word from each of our panelists and you know we uh, before we close the panel are you are you addressing that to me hitesh yeah yeah radha sir 
So, so and then we can go to Rajeshwari, Mayang, and Nikhil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so what I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, belittle the importance of getting data from uh, the kind of intelligence that uh, Deepak brings. It's absolutely necessary. But the uh, looking at the cost of digital marketing, which is really where money is being lost and businesses are shutting down because it's too expensive. I think the biggest research should be done within companies in understanding their own consumers without leaving it like a lip service, understanding your consumer. Today, we have more data than ever before. You know, we don't have to do ex uh, extrapolated data. We know exactly what they actually buy. When we were in Unilever, we used to do something called, you know, create a shop, bring customers in, allow them to pick up product and then assess what kind of a behavior. Today, we don't have to do all that. Uh, you know, like Dipali saying, the, the POC, we can, we can do, we can trial and we can find, get results within a week. So therefore, internal looking, we have to find out the non-linearity of the consumer behavior. I think that will give a lot of impetus to using the data much better. Instead of just getting mountains of data, let's just call a stop, look internally, study our, our consumer's behavior, which we are doing poorly as it is. Thank you. Thank you, Radha sir. Rajeshwari, over to you, please. I think I, 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 I again say, I think it's a very important topic and it, it just gets complicated day in day when you add the number of platforms that people are in and their behaviors that they see. So it's very, very important to assume. And so just adding, know your consumers and your internal data. So get a hang of that and be on top of it. But at the other end, do look out and see how platforms can actually bring data in a more cohesive manner. So what are the tools that you really want to use to bring that cohesiveness? Because right now you're seeing a lot of dispersed data or behavior across platforms. Can you bring that all together and view, you know, what that behavior is and how you can kind of nudge customers at the right point and relevant points of consumers? So it's important, but yeah, that is a vast data that's already sitting within you. How can you first understand that so that those understanding can be taken external to the platform? Sure. Thanks. Uh, Mayank, your views, please. Final views. Yeah, sure. Uh, totally uh, uh, agreed with both Radha sir and what Rajeshwari is saying. Uh, on similar lines, I think uh, there's a lot of data. Uh, one of the uh, drivers that I would uh, push in this conversation with is authenticity, which all the brands need to stand for and how do they drive it. And non-linearity, given the current changing uh, marketing landscape and the engagement landscape uh, across all platforms is, is very much needed. Uh, to deliver uh, driving that it may not necessarily require a lot of marketing spends because like Radha sir said uh, you know we are all not facing the problem of finding new customers but it's mostly how do we engage more and repeat with the existing ones thanks thanks Mayank uh, Rikhil about you please Right. Okay. So I, I think, uh, yeah, uh, same uh, what Mike mentioned and others mentioned that, yes, we have to look internal uh, to our data as well. But at the same time, uh, because the industry that we operate in is still nascent, I still feel that we need to, instead of getting new customer, I would put it as in getting the right customer. So right, getting the right customer and then retaining that customer is the most important aspect that I look at. And uh, that is where if that requires reaching out to the new platform, to the new ecosystem, then that's 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 what we are trying to do. At the same time, analyzing the, the data that we already have, that happens because we are there for a reason in the company. So that that's what we are doing. Sure. But sure. Uh, yeah, getting the right customer is a very important aspect because uh, and, and educating the customer at the same time is is something that we look at. Got it. Got it. Uh, before we ask Deepak, uh, Deepali, your final views, please. I think I've said enough in interest of yes. time. Let's just move on. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Deepak, could you please uh, summarize this? Okay, this is a very interesting summary for me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so basically, from my point, when um, I I think the point which we wanted to say is that that first party data is important. So is someone else's first party data important as well? You know, that is a conceptual or a directional thinking. Yes, be wise to understand that within your data, which are the valuable attributes and within the alternate data, which are the incremental attributes, which you are looking for, you know, as long as you are able to say that, listen, you know what this, this kind of signal or this kind of incremental attributes holds value to my, my, my campaign objective or my business objective. So if I want to retain customers, 
to the point that look you know if i'm running an offline store what is my biggest threat i'm my biggest threat is that okay you know people who are evolved online transactors maybe i will lose them to online platforms but people who are slow online adopters maybe i should hold them tightly you know so signals are important um, we can't uh, stop looking at signals you know so we should keep looking at meaningful signals and keep questioning all the signals all the time you know and and then say what is working what is not working so so in my view this is like a work in progress journey uh you're not going to reach a destination but what you can focus on is the continuity and the pursue persuasion which we can indulge uh, in this space okay so that sums it all uh, you know so it is just... it is just the point yeah uh, please and why do you call us all for a fireside chat to your office okay <laughs> done so you will you will hear from me very soon radha sir in fact i i had just told before the panel that you know uh, i will come to meet you which i am going to do anyways but i'll i've taken that noted and we'll uh, send the communication very soon radha so, with sit you know you sit out so, with city i am sorry mumbai i said radha. with city with city i am uh, mumbai mumbai i mean i i sit in badala okay. i sit in the tata tata trent office so okay i'll so, i'll i'll get in touch with you the one Okay. many of us are in mumbai rada so that's yeah. that's that's <laughs> so yes. the the final uh, and you know uh, it was uh, awesome and fantastic uh, talking to all of you in fact i have learned a lot today to start with you know understanding your customer is the key internal looking to find non linearity so i will have to look internally first and you know do uh, and see where non linearity is there in my organization in my data how platforms can bring cohesiveness to know the behavior of our consumer that is something is uh, uh, another insight that has come authenticity uh, what do brands stand for you know that is something which is uh, very important uh, which will then uh, you know make the customer more sticky and more relative to the brand and they can feel and relate to the brand uh, more than ever before engagement uh, landscape across the platforms is something that we discussed about getting the right customer and retaining them okay that was something uh, which was another point that was uh, shared by our panelist okay how can i get the right customer rather than more customers and then once i get it how do i retain it so how can i use this data to get it right and then retain it uh, uh, for a longer time uh, um, <clears throat> first party data is important but so is the data of somebody else also and if you can leverage on that data authentically then why not use that data to increase uh, your business value incremental value to my business will come from there signal meaning uh, signals are important look at those signals every every transaction every consumer every behavior uh, gives a signal to for a behavior and something more which we may or may not you know uh, understand at that time but obviously when we get into studying these uh, 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 these behaviors and uh, all this data which all our panelists mentioned i think we'll get a lot of insights from there and this is a work in progress it's a journey it's not something that will be static so your customer like you want to get the right customer but how long will you retain it that and to retain it it will be it will be a work in progress the journey is continuous because the customer is changing the environment is changing and focus and continuity is the uh, the word if you want to success uh, get the success for understanding and adopting uh, non linear customer intelligence and acceleration accelerate the business growth with this i thank you everyone for being a part of this wonderful panel today it was a sheer pleasure and uh, until we meet next time have a good day thank you very much thank you thank you so much my friends thank you very much thank you everyone